Do you love your wife? Yes. Prove it. Like, what's the metric? Give me the number that helps me know, right? Because when you met her, you didn't love her. Now you love her, right? Tell me the day the love happened. It's an impossible question. But it's not that it doesn't exist, it's that it's much easier to prove over time, right? Leadership is the same thing. It's about transitions. So if you were to, if you were to go to the gym, it's like exercise, right? If you go to the gym and you work out and you come back and you look in the mirror, you will see nothing. And if you go to the gym the next day and you come back and you look in the mirror, you will see nothing, right? <laughs> so clearly there's no results, can't be measured, it must not be effective. So we quit, right? Or if you fundamentally believe that this is the right course of action and you stick with it, like in a relationship, I bought her flowers and I wished her happy birthday and she doesn't love me, clearly I'll give up. That's not what happens. If you, if you believe there's something there, you commit yourself to act, an act of service. You commit yourself to the regime, the exercise. You can screw it up. You can eat chocolate cake one day, you can skip a, skip a day or two. You know, you, you, it allows for that. But if you stick with it consistently, I'm not exactly sure what day, but I know you'll start getting into shape. I know it. And the same with the relationship. It's not about the events. It's not about intensity. It's about consistency, right? You go to the dentist twice a year, your teeth will fall out. You have to brush your teeth every day for two minutes. What does brushing your teeth twice a day for two minutes do? Nothing, unless you do it every day, twice a day for two minutes. Right? It's the consistency. Going to the gym for nine hours does not get you into shape. Working out every day for 20 minutes gets you into shape. So the problem is we treat leadership with intensity. We have a two-day off-site, we invite a bunch of speakers, we give everybody a certificate, you're a leader, right? <laughs> Those things are like going to the dentist. They're very important, they're good for reminding us or getting us back on track, learning new lessons, but it's the daily practice of all the monotonous, little, boring things like brushing your teeth that matter the most. She didn't fall in love with you because you remembered her birthday and bought her flowers on Valentine's Day. She fell in love with you because when you woke up in the morning, you said good morning to her before you checked your phone. She fell in love with you because when you went to the fridge to get yourself a drink, you got her one without even asking. She fell in love with you because when you had an amazing day at work and she came home and she had a terrible day at work, you didn't say, yeah, 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 but let me tell you about my day. Right. You sat and listened to her awful day and you didn't say a thing about your amazing day. This is why she fell in love with you. I can't tell you exactly what day, and it was no particular thing you did. It was the accumulation of all of those little things that she woke up one day and it's as if she pressed a button, she goes, I love him, right? Leadership is exactly the same. There's no event. There's no thing I can tell you you have to do that your people will trust you. It just doesn't work that way. It's, the, it's an accumulation of lots and lots of little things that anyone by themselves is innocuous and useless. Literally, pointless by themselves. People will look at little things that are good leadership practices and say, that won't work, and you're absolutely right. But if you do it consistently, and you do it in combination with lots of other little things, like saying good morning to someone, that looking them in the eye. My friend George, who's a three-star general in the Marine Corps, he says his test for leadership, and I love this, he goes, his test for a good leader is if you ask somebody how their day is going, you actually care about the answer. The number of times we're walking to a meeting, we're rushing, we go, how are you, not good, I gotta got get to you later, I gotta, I'm late for a meeting. If you ask the question, you are standing there and you are listening to the answer. It's those little innocuous things that you do over and over and over and over that people will say, I love my job. Not I like my job. I like my job means, yeah, the challenge is great, they pay me well, I like the people. I love my job means, I don't want to work anywhere else. I don't care how much somebody else will, is willing to pay me. I'm devoted to the people here, and I care desperately about the people here as if they were my family. In business, we have colleagues and coworkers. In the military, they have brothers and sisters. That's how they think of each other. If you really have a strong corporate culture, the people will think of each other like brothers and sisters. Don't really, it's like a family, right? No, brothers and sisters. Deep love, fight, but the love doesn't go away. Bicker, the love doesn't go away. 
and I'll fight with my sister, but if you threaten my sister, you're going to have to deal with me. Right? We'll fight internally, we'll bicker with each other, but nobody's going to hurt each other, and if anything from the outside shows up, you gotta, you're looking at a unified front. Brothers and sisters. Now, how do you create brothers and sisters out of strangers? Common beliefs, common values, you know? Parents, in other words, executives who care about their children's success, who care to raise their children, teach them skills, discipline them when necessary, help them build their self-confidence so that they can go on and achieve something more than you could have ever imagined achieving for yourself. That's leadership.